Hello, welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed your beginnings of work with colored pencil. I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about texture with colored pencil with you. It's really not that different from any texture work you've done with other pencils, but I'll explain how I approach it in this video. I hope it helps you to think about colored pencils maybe in a little bit different way and to experiment and have some fun with texture. Before you start, you wanna make sure that you've laid out basic value structures on your object. Then what you're gonna to do to apply texture is use the darkest versions and the lightest versions of those local colors on your object to create texture. So here you can see me using a Tuscan Red to push some of the dark kind of divots that you see in orange skin into the darkest parts of the shadows. If I were to do this again, I probably go would go in with one value lighter than that Tuscan Red. I think it just got a little bit too dark. However, it does illustrate that process of making the texture. Now I'm coming in on the top side of each of where each of those little bumps would be with my lighter values and trying to add a little pump of color. Here I'm coming in with some orange and then white, just trying to like blend out those colors, blend out those textures, kind of fill things in. Then I'm using the mineral orange on the top or the highlighted section of the orange to add some of the values in there. And then I'm popping in some yellow to brighten and warm it up. Um, and that's how I created the texture on the orange. For my dog's nose, I've already added the value. And in the darkest parts of the nose, I'm going in with an indigo blue and a Tuscan red, and I'm kind of creating um, lines like the cracks and the crevices in the texture of the dog nose. Um, and then I went in with white and yellow in the middle just to kind of blend that out so you saw the shape better. And what you'll see me do here is go back in with the navy and the red and then some dark brown in the center where it's lighter to draw more of those intersecting lines to create the shapes on the dog dog nose. Then I'm going to go in and just push the darkest parts darker, add line quality, um, and modify the shadows a little bit just to bring out the edges of the dog's nose where it's edgier. <laughs> Um, the next thing I'm going to do is move into the fur. This dog has a lighter fur and I'm drawing on white paper. So in order to make that fur look light, I need to use some darker shadow colors um, to draw in the spaces between the light fur. So that's what you're seeing me do here. If I were to draw on my own a lighter dog, I would probably draw it on gray paper um, or black paper so that I could really utilize those light colors and the darkness of the paper behind. I prefer doing colored pencil on a tone paper actually. Um, for my flower, I wanted to do more of a smooth texture on the petals, so this would be a good texture for anything that's smooth. And I laid down all of my color originally with some um, long and um, lean contour lines that flow with the shape of the petal. And what I'm doing then is I came in with darker values um, in the dark petal and laid in some of those lines darker, and then I used my lightest value, which was a pink colored pencil, to blend that out. And there you can see me using that pink again. On the white petal in the back, I, I laid in the darker petals, and again, I came in with the light yellow to blend that out. Um, and so it's a combination of laying down darker lines and then coming in and burnishing on tarp, top of those dark lines with a lighter color. Uh, and I do the same thing in the lighter area of the inside of the petal that's kind of a yellowish white, um, but it's a little less evident because I didn't want those stripes to be as obvious. Here I'm coming in and I'm just pushing the darks darker, trying to create more sense of shadow, coming in with the white and the pink to kind of blend it out, soften it up a little bit. And there's a lot of back and forth. Um, I'll push things darker and then I'll add a little light and then I'll push things darker and I'll add a little light. I'll add some texture and then sometimes I blend it like I did in this case with the white pencil or the pink and I burnished it out. And then I'll go back in and I'll add my line quality to bring out my edges. And in this flower I added a darker background just so you could see the white of the petal a little bit better. My tree branch, unfortunately, did not catch the first part of the demo where I did the front piece. But basically, um, I wanted the front branch to stick out more, so I did darker colors in the shadows in the front, and in the back I did lighter values. Um, I used a lot of indigo blue and Tuscan red in the shadows on this brown branch, worked pretty well, um, and a lot of scumbling, so scratchy little big marks um, all over, trying to create more of them in the front so it pops forward. 
Here I'm doing two examples of hair, two different hair types. The one I'm working on right now is um, a really tight curl um, where you're not seeing as much of the individual strands. So I laid down the value and then I went in with um, a kind of a bigger scumble. I wanted to be able to see that scumble and I laid those values in. Here on the straighter hair, I'm using um, some darker browns and reds and a little bit of blue in the darkest parts of the shadows to lay down the shadow structure a little bit more. And I'm trying to make sure that my line is still evident. I want you to see the line from the pencil because that's what gives the texture of the hair. So my last layers are really making sure I've got a few darker lines in there that you can see. And then I brightened up the highlights in the other hair. Here is my owl sample where I'm trying to put together all the different things that we've shown so far. So there's smooth and rough parts on this beak and the first thing I'm doing is I'm laying in the darkest parts of those values um, using a combination of purples and blues and reds. Um, you could use things like black as well because this beak would be black. I try to have my students not use black um, just because they depend too much on it and you can really get some more interesting values if you're going to um, do dark colors by combining dark colors instead of just black. Um, I'm doing a bit of scumbling on the top of the beak and the bottom is all more linear. Now I'm starting to work out the feather structures around the eye. The feathers around the eye are light on a dark object, so I really have to use the dark marks to create the sense of feathers. Here you can see me coming in with um, some different browns. The feathers around the eye are really small, so I'm using tiny little hatches and I'm just laying out the basic colors. Now I'm coming in on top of those colors with some variations, some darker values, just to kind of give the sense that there's darker skin underneath the lighter values to get my darker values even darker. And I'm just using tiny little hatches layered over and over each other. Um, on the top of the eyes, there is kind of, I don't know, I'm going to call it a brow ridge for lack of better term, that's white. So I laid in some really light colored pencil and then some light brown. Um, and then I'm working in the darks around it. The feathers outside um, in this space are a little bit bigger, so I'm using bigger marks and I'm just kind of layering things in. This part of the owl is white and I'm drawing on white paper. So I have to draw the stem of the feathers and then the texture of the feather where it meets the beak, I have to draw little sketchy scumble lines into the feather, white feather area to make it look like there's white feathers overlapping dark. This is another piece that I for sure would draw on a gray paper or a black paper if I were to draw an owl um, for a finished piece, just because then I could really utilize the white on the white feathers nicely on that darker paper. Here I'm trying to draw some larger kind of feather textures into the bottom where there's some darker values underneath um, and just layering, 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 adding a little bit more detail into that white area so it doesn't look quite so linear so there's a little bit more texture in there. And if you're noticing with all of the texture work that I do on any of these pieces is there's a lot of back and forth um, and it's really utilizing sharp pencils and marks to create texture. So get a sharp pencil, think about what mark is going to best highlight your texture, play around with it in your sketchbook till you get it right, and don't be afraid to push with your Prismacolor. That's really going to saturate your colors and give you a much more interesting finished piece. Here um Here you can see the side by side um, with the finished textures on top and unfinished on the bottom. And really it just adds detail and depth to a piece. It adds more interest. So take your time in building up your textures. Don't be afraid to try things out in your sketchbook first. And remember, sometimes the color and definitely the quality of the paper can make a big difference in your outcome. So as you're continuing to work on drawings, think about playing around with different papers to see how they interact with your colored pencils or different types of pencils moving forward. Take your time, layer things up, play around, and don't be afraid to push and get dark with these colored pencils. That's really what a Prisma colored pencil drawing should be. Saturated, pure, beautiful colors like this piece. This is a piece that I completed over my winter break this year. You can see that I've really tried to saturate the colors within the handprints, pushed hard to get deep values in those flowers and nice highlights. And this piece is done on a high quality, 
gray toned Kona paper. Um, and you can really see the difference in how the color pencil works on a higher quality piece of paper such as this. Um, also note that in the background behind my flowers, I didn't saturate the color as much. I never burnished or pushed with my colored pencil so that that background stayed soft and muted and really sat back from where the flowers are in the foreground of this piece. You can also see varied textures in the branch versus the background versus the flowers. Really play around with your textures and your colored pencils or any pencil work that you do because it can make a piece so much more interesting. Have some fun, see what you can do, and let go of whatever fear you have in tackling this new and really interesting medium. We'll see you soon.